This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus three hours, four minutes, 32 seconds and counting. Right on time as far as the astronaut countdown is concerned, the prime crew now departing from their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and then finally Mike Collins, plus their suit technicians and director of flight crew operations, Deke Slayton, now boarding the transfer van for the trip to the launch pad. Slayton actually will drop off from the transfer van as it passes by here at the launch control center. The trip in the transfer van should take some 15 minutes or so to reach the pad, at which time the astronauts will board uh, the first of two elevators for the trip to the 320-foot level at the launch pad, uh, where they will then proceed to ingress the spacecraft. At the present time, the backup lunar module pilot, astronaut Fred Hayes, is already aboard the Apollo 11 spacecraft, performing some preliminary checks. This work in, uh, includes uh, checking the chlorine content of the water supply and adjusting the cabin lights inside the spacecraft in preparation for the arrival. We log the, the departure from the building at about 6.27 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The transfer van now departing from the Manned Spacecraft Operations Building at the Kennedy Space Center on the start of its eight-mile trip to Launch Pad A here at Complex uh, 39, where the Saturn V launch vehicle now fully loaded with propellants and, uh, and the spacecraft uh, going through preliminary checkouts. Right now, our count at three hours, three minutes, and counting, aiming toward the planned liftoff time of 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This is Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control at T-minus 2 hours, 45 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. As the prime crew for Apollo 11, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collin, and Edwin Aldrin are on the terminal part of their trip to the launch pad in the transfer van. It's now making the curve toward the pad. We have discovered a problem at the launch pad itself as the crew is about to arrive. We have a leak in a valve located in a system associated with replenishing liquid hydrogen for the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This is a piece of ground support equipment, actually. It is not on the rocket itself. It's located on the tower of the mobile launcher at the 200-foot level. This valve is leaking. We had a problem with this same valve during our countdown demonstration test previously. We have sent a team of uh, three technicians and a safety man to the pad, and these technicians are now tightening bolts around the valve. Uh, once the technicians depart, we will uh, send hydrogen again through this system uh, to assure that the leak has uh, been corrected. The astronauts are uh, now coming up uh, toward the pad itself as uh, the crew of uh, several technicians at the 200-foot level proceed to tighten some bolts around a leaking valve. Once again, this valve is associated with the system that replenishes liquid hydrogen for the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. Because of the extremely low temperatures of the hydrogen, it continues to boil off during this, these phases of the count, and we continue to replenish the supply down the final moments of the count to assure that we have 100% aboard. The crew is working on the valve at this time, and the crew went in a short time ago, and they're going to be followed shortly by the astronaut team, which has just arrived at the pad, the transfer van now backing up toward the elevator. In a matter of uh, five minutes or so, we'll be ready for the spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, to come across the sill at the 320-foot level. That is our status at two hours, 43 minutes, 47 seconds, and counting. This is Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 2 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. At this time, the prime crew for Apollo 11 has boarded the high-speed elevator from inside the A-level in the mobile launcher, which is the second level inside the launcher. This is a high-speed elevator, 600 feet per minute, which will carry them to the 320-foot level, uh, the spacecraft level. Uh, shortly, uh, we'll expect astronauts Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins to come across swing arm nine, the Apollo access arm, and proceed to the white room and uh, stand by to board the spacecraft. The third member of the crew, astronaut Edwin Aldrin, who will be the last one to board the spacecraft, 
will stand by in the elevator, seated in a chair, while his two comrades first board the spacecraft. Once uh, Armstrong, who sits in the left-hand seat, and Collins, who will sit in the right-hand seat uh, during liftoff, are aboard, then Aldrin will be called, and he will uh, take his seat, the middle seat, in the spacecraft. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and the command module pilot, Michael Collins, now proceeding across the swing arm into the small white room that attaches at the spacecraft uh, level. In the meantime, about 100 feet below, we have a technician, a uh, team of technicians working on a leaking valve, which is a part of the ground support equipment, a part of the system that's used to replenish the fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. He is uh, proceeding to tighten a series of bolts around this valve in the hope that this will correct the leak. Once the technicians do depart, the uh, uh, hydrogen will again be flowed through the system to assure that the leak has been corrected. The uh, spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and CMP, the command module pilot, Mike Collins, now standing by in the white room. T minus two hours, 38 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus two hours, 10 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. At the 320 foot level, the fourth astronaut aboard the spacecraft regretfully leaves at this time. Astronaut Fred Hayes is about to come out after giving the three prime crewmen a hand in their preliminary checkouts aboard. Fred Hayes will be coming out shortly. In the meantime, 120 feet below where we had that problem with a leaky valve, the technicians have completed their work and they are in the process now of departing from the launch pad. In a short while, we'll start flowing hydrogen again back uh, through the general replenishing system to, to uh, continue to top off the supply of the hydrogen fuel in the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, has completed a series of checks uh, called the board advisory system checks. This is where certain key crewmen on the ground, members of the launch team, can uh, send signals uh, to the spacecraft commander in the spacecraft, light cues that would indicate uh, difficulty during the flight in which he could take aboard action if he uh, de determined that such action was necessary. These checks have been completed, and Neil Armstrong confirmed that the lights came on in the console in front of him, the panel in front of him, as uh, these lights were uh, operated from the ground here in the launch control center. All still going well with our count. Uh, we will stand by as we, again, uh, bring hydrogen back to the third stage. You will see how that operates. We're now at T-minus two hours, nine minutes, four seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus two hours, seven minutes and counting. At this time, we're just in the process of closing the hatch on the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Uh, several of the closeout crew shook hands with the astronauts and then proceeded to close the hatch on direction from the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin. We had it logged as the hatch being closed and tightened, uh, still being tightened right at this time, which is 25 minutes past the hour. Once the hatch is closed, uh, we will 
start a cabin purge to condition uh, the cabin inside. The three astronauts, of course, are on pure oxygen in their spacesuits on the suit circuit. We will uh, produce a cabin atmosphere in the spacecraft of a 60-40 combination, 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen. This is the atmosphere used uh, for liftoff. Once that is accomplished, the closeout crew will be ready to put the boost protective cover uh, on the hatch and continue with their closeout. The hatch uh, being closed at this time, we are proceeding. We'll stand by to see uh, uh, how our hydrogen condition is as far as replenishing the hydrogen fuel supply with the third stage of the Saturn V. Two hours, five minutes, 50 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus one hour, 30 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. All elements are go with the countdown at this time, the countdown aimed toward landing two astronauts on the moon. At this time, the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, going through some checks with astronaut Mike Collins aboard the spacecraft. We're winding up this important emergency detection system test that Neil Armstrong has been participating in. Meanwhile, at the 320-foot level, the closeout crew now placing the boost protective cover uh, over the hatch now that we have completed the cabin purge and have the proper environment inside the cabin. We have also performed leak checks to assure ourselves uh, that the cabin atmosphere is valid. This boost protective cover is used during the early phases of the powered flight and is jettisoned with the escape tower shortly after second stage ignition. Here in the firing room, the launch vehicle test team still keeping a close eye on the status of the propellants aboard the Saturn V launch vehicle. We're back to 100% supply with the liquid hydrogen fuel in the third stage. This problem with the leaking valve is uh, no problem at this time. We've actually bypassed the valve, but we uh, are maintaining our hydrogen supply aboard the vehicle. Uh, all aspects go. The weather is very satisfactory for launch this morning. A thin cloud, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. A short while ago, in fact, uh, the space uh, spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, informed Spacecraft Commander Neil Armstrong that we were doing quite well. In fact, some 15 minutes ahead on some aspects of the preparation spacecraft-wise. Armstrong replied that was fine just as long as we don't launch 15 minutes early, obviously referring to the start of the window. The countdown uh, still going well, T-minus 55 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've passed the 51-minute mark in our countdown. We're now T-minus 50 minutes, 51 seconds and counting. Apollo 11 countdown is still go at this time. All elements reporting ready at this point in the countdown. The spacecraft uh, correction the test supervisor, Bill Schick, has advised all hands here in the control center and uh, the spacecraft checkout people. Then in about 30 seconds, that big swing arm that has been attached to the spacecraft up to now will be moved back to a park position some five feet away from the spacecraft. We alert the astronauts because there is a little jolt when the swing arm is moved away. It will remain in that position some five feet away from the spacecraft until the five-minute mark and the count when it's completely pulled back to its retracted position. It's coming up now in five seconds. The swing arm will come back. Mark. The swing arm now coming back from the spacecraft. The countdown proceeding satisfactorily. We've completed our telemetry checks with the launch vehicle. And at this point, with the swing arm back, we arm the pyrotechnics so that escape tower atop the astronauts, atop their spacecraft, could be used if a ca catastrophic condition was going to occur under them with the launch vehicle from this point on down in the countdown. We have the high-speed elevator located at the 320-foot level in the event the astronauts have to get out in a hurry. This is a pre special precaution. Uh, one of the members of the support team for Apollo 11, astronaut Bill Pogue, is here in the firing room. He acts as the capsule communicator during the countdown. His call sign is Stoney. He controls that elevator. He now has it locked at the 320-foot level. These are special precautions for safety purposes during the final phase of the count. Now coming up on the 49-minute mark in the countdown, this is Kennedy Launch Control. 
This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We passed the 41 minute mark in our count. T minus 40 minutes, 53 seconds and counting. We are continuing and we're continuing very excellently at this time. There are no problems that have been reported in as the countdown uh, continues to click down. We're still aiming for the start of our window on this, the first flight to land men on the moon. Our, we're aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Coming up shortly will be a key test here in the firing room as far as the launch vehicle people are concerned. It's a, some final checks of the destruct system aboard the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. In the event uh, during powered flight that the vehicle strayed rather violently off course, uh, the range safety officer could take action to destroy the vehicle. This obviously would occur after the astronauts were separated by their escape tower from the faulty vehicle. We make a check of the destruct system to assure that if a signal is required to get through, that in fact it will. This is what is coming up here in the control center at this time. All aspects of the mission still go. We're at T-minus 39 minutes, 47 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 36-minute mark in our countdown. T-minus 35 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. We've completed those range safety command checks, all still going well with the countdown. A short while ago, spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin asked uh, Neil Armstrong if the crew was comfortable up there. And uh, Neil reported back. He said, it's, we're very comfortable. It's very nice this morning. For a status report, we'll now switch to Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Mission Control. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth team is on station here in the Mission Operations Control Room, ready to assume the control of this flight at tower clearance. There is a possibility that Apollo 11 will check out the command module color TV camera during the first Earth revolution while in contact with the Goldstone Station. If this checkout does occur, we, we acquire Goldstone at 1 hour 29 minutes elapsed time. We have a loss of signal at 1 hour 33 minutes 50 seconds elapsed time. This TV camera checkout is a possibility. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 26 minute mark in the count. T minus 25 minutes 53 seconds and counting. Still proceeding very satisfactorily. At this time, uh, spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin working with astronaut Buzz Aldrin in the middle seat, uh, covering the final pressurization of the reaction control system for the spacecraft. These are those uh, big thrusters on the side of the service module that are used for maneuvers in space. Each one of these thrusters is capable of 100 pounds of thrust. There are 16 of them located in four quadrants around the service module. We pressurized the system with helium uh, prior to launch to make sure that all will be in readiness for use in space. The countdown still proceeding satisfactorily. It picked up uh, at the T-minus nine hour mark at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight last evening. We've just had two comparatively minor problems uh, since that time. The major portion of uh, the countdown uh, during the early morning hours, some five hours of work was taken to load the various propellants aboard the stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. As we came into the count this morning, we did already have the fuel aboard the first stage, but it was necessary to bring the liquid oxygen aboard all three stages and the liquid hydrogen fuel aboard the second and third stages. Uh, close to uh, three quarters of a million gallons of propellants were loaded during these five hours. Following uh, that, the astronauts, the prime crew, were awakened at 4.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight as planned in their countdown and proceeded to uh, have a physical examination in which they were declared flight ready. They sat down for the normal astronaut fare on launch day as far as breakfast is concerned, orange juice, steak, scrambled eggs, toast, and coffee. The three uh, pilots were joined by two of their colleagues at breakfast, uh, Director of Flight Crew Operations, Deke Slayton, and the backup command module pilot, Bill Anders, who uh, has been named uh, the executive secretary of the National Aeronautics and Space Council. The astronauts departed from their crew quarters. Uh, after checking out their suits, they departed from the crew quarters at 6.27 a.m. And some 27 minutes later, 
eight miles away from the crew quarters at the Kennedy Space Center, atop the launch pad at Complex 39, 6.54 a.m., the commander, astronaut Neil Armstrong, was the first to board the spacecraft. He was uh, followed about five minutes later by Mike Collins, and finally Buzz Aldrin, the man who's sitting in the middle seat uh, during liftoff, was the third astronaut to come aboard. Two minor problems have been encountered during the count. Early in the count, a malfunction light came on here in the control center, indicating that we might have a communication problem at the launch pad. Nothing to do with the spacecraft, but it indicated we possibly might not be able to talk to some uh, key technicians we had at the pad. Uh, the problem turned out to be very minor. A simple adjustment of some equipment beneath the pad uh, remedied the problem. There was no, uh, in fact, no equipment problem involved. The second problem, we did encounter a leaky valve in part of the equipment that's used to replenish the hydrogen fuel supply on the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. A team of technicians were sent out to the launch pad at about the time the astronauts were traveling to the pad. They tightened some bolts and uh, we were able to bypass this valve and uh, proceed with our countdown. The weather is uh, certainly go. It's a beautiful morning for a launch to the moon. We expect a temperature of about 85 degrees in the Kennedy Space Center area. The wind's about 10 miles, 10 knots rather, from the southeast. And uh, the weather conditions and the round-the-world track, according to reports from the Manned Space Flight Meteorology Group, indicate all weather conditions are acceptable for launch. That's our general status. We've just passed the 22-minute mark in the count. 21 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 11-minute mark. Now T minus 10 minutes, 54 seconds on our countdown for Apollo 11. All still go at this time. The astronauts in the spacecraft busy again. The commander, Neil Armstrong, has uh, performed some final uh, switch settings for the stabilization and control system of the spacecraft. The spacecraft also now is on full internal power. This came shortly after the 15-minute mark. The spacecraft now on the full power of its fuel cells. Up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Both Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have armed their rotational hand controllers, the controllers they use in flight. And we have now gone to the automatic system with the emergency detection system, that system that would uh, cue the astronauts uh, if there's trouble down below with the Saturn V rocket during the powered flight. We're now coming up on the 10 minute mark, 10 minutes away from our planned liftoff. Mark, T minus 10 minutes and counting, T minus 10. We're aiming for our planned liftoff at 32 minutes past the hour. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission. And this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. Test supervisor are now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager Paul Donner reports go for launch. Launch director Rocco Patron uh, now gives a go with five minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tele telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute, 30 second mark in the countdown, still go at this time. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor, Norm Carlson, you are go, go for launch. From this time down, uh, Carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle 
uh, begins to build up. We're now hitting the four-minute mark. Four, minute mar four minutes and counting. We are go for Apollo 11. We'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds. Three minutes, 45 seconds and counting. And the final uh, abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about uh, 10 or 15 seconds from this time. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three-minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. We are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Two minutes, 10 seconds and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We've just passed the two minute mark in the countdown. T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the Oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80-second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50-second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60-second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. We passed T-minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Plus 30 seconds. Roll's complete, and the pitch is programming. Two miles. All 
11 Houston, you're good at one minute. Downrange one mile, altitude three, four miles now. Velocity 2,195 feet per second. Uh, start bottle pressure red line is lit. I don't. Where? Yeah, it don't make a difference. No difference. Okay, let's punch them out. Everything is go, Ralph. We're through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. Yeah, everything looks good here. We're at 1350 in the start bottle. Set eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Staging. And ignition. S4B is go. 11 Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. Hi, Roger. You're loud and clear, Houston. At three minutes, downrange 70 miles, 43 miles high, velocity 9,300 yeah. feet per second. We got skirt step. Roger, we confirm skirt step. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt separation and the launch escape tower separation. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger, out. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, they finally gave me a window.